yes. Bad. Can you hear us? Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, we've got um our other counterpart, Romana. She's just nipped off and come. Oh, she should be back now. You're good. <laughs> hey. Hello. Thank you very much for coming on. Sorry, we've got the uh the times mixed up. It said it was twelve at PM our time, and then it just got a bit mixed up. But we were on here chatting anyway, so it's uh yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Texas, so I don't know. Ah. Bright and early here. Yeah. What time is it over there, Rach? Seven. Seven. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you get your bed? It's okay. I'm, I'm, no, I'm get up at like four. So this is like afternoon for me. <laughs> Are you even a bodybuilder if you don't get up before everybody else? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like before the sun. Or you're yeah. not a hardcore. Well, so, quite... um, hmm? Sorry. Sorry, you guys, Deb, so I was just going to chat shit. That's all right. So obviously we're just gonna we're just gonna intro it. So just first of all, thank you for taking time out of your super super busy yeah. schedule to come on and talk sure. about all things women's physique. We've been yeah we've been dying to get you on. So thank you so so much. Um, for those that don't know, this is Rachel Daniels. She's known on Instagram as the Real Lois Lane. She has taken women's physique by storm. She is one of the top seven Olympians, and you've just got your qualification for the Big O, haven't you? Yes, I have. Yeah. I just did a uh, St. Louis Pro in April, so that will qualify me to go back to this year's 2022 Olympia. Amazing. So, what's your sort of run up for that then? If 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 we're allowed to know, what 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 are your plans for that? How are you going to approach it? Uh, I'm going to approach it like I approach anything, just full on, um, full gas. I'm gonna. I got seventh my first my first Olympia was uh in 2020 and i got seventh that was my second pro show so i was a a baby pro uh i had just done new york before that and um i kind of didn't have anything to lose so seventh for my first olympia kind of was a was a good start and uh but now i've had a year off so i took all of 2021 off just to grow and to get my mind right and everything like that so i came back this year um Six, six, seven pounds heavier on stage than I did at the Olympia at St. Louis Pro. Um, I put on a lot of new muscle, same conditioning as always. And I, that wasn't even the show I was planning on doing was Pittsburgh. And I, I honestly was ready to get on stage. So I hopped on St. Louis Pro probably at like only at like 50% of my actual peak. So that was probably like a month, my outlook that I got on stage at so I still managed to win St. Louis um so I'm just going to bring it in tighter and harder at the Olympia and uh you know I don't look at other girls a lot but I do know obviously who the top five at the Olympia is um and if I'm being honest I don't think I'll have too much of a problem getting in the top three this year so I'm, I mean the, the condition you bought for St. Louis was if that's 50 percent then really like your 100 percent is going to be absolutely undeniable you know yeah, that's what I plan on. I'm um, I'm known for my conditioning, and this year was kind of my first year at St. Louis that I actually brought um, the the size and the fullness that everyone wants. You know, it's it's not easy to get conditioned, but it's it's even harder to bring conditioning and still bring the fullness. I used to always err out of being a little flat and and being the most peeled girl on stage just because I never had the size to really compete with the big girls on in the size game um mm. but now I do and I did so uh yeah so it's I'm, I feel like I'm in a really good spot you know I took a year off so my body responded really well my head was in a really good spot for St. Louis and now I still have like seven months to the Olympia and that was my plan to to knock out my qualification early and do the same thing I did is you know I'm not one of those bodies that do really well on competing like every weekend all year uh, it's better when I rest and I bring my all for one or two shows so that's what I'm planning on doing and then just coming in hot for the Olympia with everything rested and ready to go yeah I mean how long do your preps tend to take Rachel? are they are they long preps like do you prefer shorter or longer um I you know everyone's every prep of mine's been a little different this last prep was I don't want to say it was my easiest but it was the most tolerable and 
I mean, I don't, I never really totally go off like my meal plan and just like fuck around all year. So I don't want people to say, when's your prep start? I, don't, I, I start cutting, um, if that's what people want, when I start going into like a deficit, mm-hmm. I don't like, uh, sometimes it's 12 weeks, sometimes 15. Um, but depending on where I'm starting at, it could be, you yeah. know, less than that or mm-hmm. less than that. Um, but I think ultimately I like a little bit longer amount of time. I don't like to rush. I like to be ready a little bit early so I can, my coach and I can pull, uh, pull cardio out and just kind of recover and come in, I can work on my posing and just come into the show, not like doing cardio and working out on peak week. So yeah. that's how I prepare it. Cause you're with Shelby, aren't you, H? Yeah. Shelby A. Starnes is my coach and I love him to death. And yeah. How long have you been with him? You've been with him for a while now, haven't you? Um, since 2020. So pretty much most of my physique career he, he, from an amateur. Yeah, we went pro together in, in 2020. I came to him and we, that was a prep. Our first show was a prep where I was not, we rushed because I came, I hired him when I was like six weeks out from uh, Tampa at, as an amateur. And I looked probably like 20 weeks out. So we had to hustle and uh, yeah. we did that. and then we did junior USA's where I got my pro card three weeks later. And then we did New York pro a week after that. And then we did the Olympia in St. Louis so, was our fifth show together. So that was, that would have been lockdown year as well then for you guys over in the States. Yeah. COVID year was like, cause we, best, I turned pro 2020 as well. <laughs> I was so. like, <laughs> Yeah, COVID year was really bad for everybody, but... Um, trying to train and prep in a lockdown situation with the the stakes of your pro card hanging over your head. My God, I was like, the amount was, of stress I felt that year was ridiculous. Yeah, it was weird because I'm, I'm really good at, like, being alone, so I know, I know a lot of people got really, like, depressed mm. and stuff, but I was like, I was like, this is a great time for me to just lock in. So, like, I got really, really really good at my posing i think my posing went to a ne- new level that year um and maybe it's i was on an entirely different level to everybody else let's yeah. be honest it's insane <laughs> i had actually a- transfixed just watching your videos thanks i ha- yeah i had a lot of time to like really just be alone and work on creative moments by myself probably like an unhealthy amount of time but um and i got to sneak into some um someone's garage gym for a while that had like four pieces of equipment and I was just like there every day um so I still trained um during COVID which is lucky for me I still had like a leg press and leg extensions and I did like weird shit outside with like heavy objects but (laughs) um but Florida at least I used to live in Florida and Florida was I don't want to say they didn't really care about COVID, but they didn't really, they didn't really care. So yeah. was, Florida was kind of more lax with like yeah. the rules regarding COVID. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it didn't, weren't closed very long. Didn't yeah. quite a lot of the big, the big pros end up moving to, to Florida during that time. Yeah. I'm sure a bit like, a bit like the Brits, we all, they went to Dubai, those that could. Yeah. <laughs> if you could get out. Yeah. A lot of people mm-hmm. can Florida and they're still coming to Florida and um I just moved to Texas so it's not too different from the Florida rules the south is the south as we say <laughs> it's a such yeah. a, like we were saying it's such like a vast country that's like why were we getting all because here we're all on the same time zone so we were like we're trying to like is it the right because we didn't know if you were in like Tampa or Texas and we're like I think I got the right time Central time. Yeah, I was in Eastern. Now I'm in Central. Whatever that is. I think yeah. we've learned we need to ask the location of our American guests because we can work it out more accurately that way than the time zone. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I did it on my phone and yeah, Debs and I both oh, got I, an hour early. Because some states have two time zones. Yeah, that's what yeah. we figured out. We've yeah. come to realize today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you were talking, obviously, like your routine, your most recent routine that you did, just blew away everyone. Like you said, the conditioning, the whole package. How how did you? I mean, I I know I I kind of know because I've been following you. We know 
because we've been following you for a long time but could you obviously talk to those that are listening like sort of how you got into like creating such you know or creative routines and how how yeah you just managed to make them look so effortless and amazing thank thank you first of all it's really nice um, so like developing my posing style has been obviously a process when i first started bodybuilding um i did not know anything about posing what it was anything like that i before i started bodybuilding i was a dancer um a majority of my life i was a a dancer and i did theater um I did musical theater, all different types of dance, ballet, jazz, mostly uh, hip hop was like my my forte, I guess you could say. And um, I was a professional dancer for a long time. And then when I got into bodybuilding, I I thought like what a lot of people think that posing would be easy because I was a dancer Um, and it was not. I I had no idea what I was doing. I, I didn't really ask a lot of people for help with it ever. Um, I kind of just looked at people on the internet, like, you know, you type in bodybuilding posing and obviously the big names come up like Lee Labrada and Kai Green and, you know, Corey Everson and all the old school, you know, people. Um, so I saw that and I would- Well, a lot of them, your sort of point of reference were a lot of the men. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I- I looked at any women except for Corey Everson, and that was, you know, a couple years later um, that I discovered there were some really great female posers back in, like, the 80s um, that we just don't see as much of now. And I I, I found myself trying to kind of do what everyone else was doing and I was failing at it. It didn't feel right. Kind of feels like you're posing in the wrong category or something like that type of feeling. So um, I finally got to a point where I just started, I realized that I could, um, I kind of watched Kai Green a lot and I liked him and I was drawn to him a lot just because he had a hip hop background and so did I. And he wasn't, he was a very orthodox poser so I saw that he was kind of combining a lot of hip hop and New York style hip hop in his in his posing routines, and and it, and it was more so a dance um, with posing inserted in certain places rather than just posing. And I I kind of had like an aha moment. And I was like, I I have a shit ton of dance experience. Um, what if I just take my dance? what if I make this a dance and then at certain moments incorporate bodybuilding poses? Would that be okay? And um, I had no idea. Um, but I I finally got to get on stage in front of people, you know, at my pro card and, and, and at Tampa. And that was um, kind of the first time that I ever, you know, tried tried out my style or what it was at the time on a crowd. And they fucking flipped out and they were like, this is awesome. Like, what the fuck was that? And (laughs) so that's kind of how it started. I, I, I less so focused on, I have to do a front double bicep and I have to do a back double bicep and I have to do this move. And I kind of just danced and I, I, I built my repertoire. I learned, you know, different poses. And then I, you know, every couple seconds in my dance, I would stop and do a pose. And then my dance, became the transitions of the routine and I still it would still be a bodybuilder routine because I had all the poses and then I as I evolved yeah. I started to get more free with um inventing new stuff that doesn't poses that don't really exist I guess you could say and um and you know the more comfortable I got doing it the more artistic risks that I take now and I have a better ability of doing them in front of other people and that's kind of where I'm at now um that's where I've gotten with it is what you you kind of see me doing now yeah like for a couple of us that are making our like pro debut this year um would you reckon with like a routine is that like something that you think you should make a priority because in my opinion the routine is what leaves you know there's nothing better than walking out onto a stage creating a routine and getting a like a standing ovation like you did do you think it's very important to take the time to create a routine, especially if it's your first impressions to, you know, new judges, it's our pro debut, we want to be like, look, I'm here on stage, I'm new, I'm going to make an impact. Do you think it's super important to take more time on a routine when you get to a professional level? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to... So first of all, you kind of have to ask yourself, I'm going to be biased because I'm a performer at heart. Mm -hmm. I always say, like, I'm not a bodybuilder. I'm an artist that bodybuilds, right? So that just shows you my intention with the sport. Um, obviously, I care about winning and, and bringing great physique in the gym and everything, but I have a different sort of love and bias towards the performance aspect. So I'm always going to say the routine is very important. But it's you have to ask yourself, what kind of pro – are you trying to be when you say you want to make an impact? Every pro should want to make an impact, but you have to, that comes back to your why. So wh what is the impact? You have to ask yourself, what is the impact that I want to make as a, as a pro? Do you want to be known as the person with the ridiculous conditioning? Do you want to be known as the person who's like the biggest guy on stage? Do you want to be known as, oh my gosh, when she comes on, that's the best poser in the world. So, and you can want all of them, but, um, it's going to change the, the level of, of what the routine means to you. Um, I can say that the judges definitely know me for, for my posing um, and my stage presence. I'll say my stage presence, if anything. So, but I think do, having a confidence of a routine is going to trickle on whether that's your most, you know, whether that's the thing closest to your heart the most or not, having the confidence that comes from bringing a good posing package is going to trickle on to all the other, how you present all the other aspects of your physique on stage. So uh, I do think it's really important. You know, people say posing's not judged. Um, yeah, it's not directly judged, but your physique is judged. And how do you showcase your physique to the best of your ability? It is by posing in the right way. Um, I know how to take all the judges' eyes off of every other girl on stage, even if they look better than me, because of the confidence that I'm bringing through my posing on stage. Um, and you can beat people that way. So, yeah, I think it's very important. The routine is very important. The morning routine is more important. Um, but for me as an artist, you know, I could go out there and probably do something. And I'm just being honest. I could probably go out there and do something a lot less complicated. I could probably go out there and freestyle for a routine if I wanted to. I've done that at guest posings and other things like that. Um, but I don't because for me as an artist, the that routine is more so for, for me challenging myself to do something I've never done to a new level artistically with my choreography rather than, you know, just going out there and being like, well, I did something cool. Like that should be enough, right? Thing is, you stand out so much when <laughs> under the lights, you you know, you know exactly who's a strong poser and who isn't. And if you're a strong poser, then everyone's eyes are going to be on you, like you said, Rach. Like it just, you know, all the all the issues, all the like weaknesses of other competitors. If they're not a strong poser, then it's going to show. So even if you like said, even if they're bigger girls, more conditioned girls, or whatever, if you're a good poser, then the judges' eyes are automatically going to be on you anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to have all your, you want to use all the tricks in your bag, right? So it's, you know, it's having a good physique. It's, it's just like a prep, you know, you do the supplements, you have the diet, you have the cardio, you have all these tricks that you want to pull out of your bag um, and have in your bag to pull out ultimately. So on stage, especially as a pro, especially as an Olympian and as an amateur, you should be already thinking as an Olympian, if you plan on being one, why wouldn't you? pursue every avenue of this sport to the best of your ability if it's going to help you win you know at, at the top levels I'm not saying like every show you're going to beat somebody because you're a better poser you know there's people who are sh worse posers and they just win because they have a better physique sometimes but at the top level when you're in the pros or the Olympia or even getting your pro card when everybody is you know, that gap between who looks fantastic and who doesn't is so is getting a lot smaller and everybody looks fucking fantastic. Everybody has good genetics now. OK, everybody, you know, has great conditioning now. OK, so what are you going to do that's going to blow them out of the water and get you that win and get you that qualification? So that's the time you want things in your bag, like posing and this and that. Yeah. 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 It's having that individuality as well, isn't it? Like you don't want to be the same as every other every other woman, do you? You want to really stand out, and that's something like you know us three have prided ourselves in, and myself especially, like is being different as a person and as an athlete and as a, a new pro. Like 
I want to stand out. I want to be different. And I think it's like you said, finding that niche is like, I know I can be conditioned. I just need to be a slightly bigger. I need to, like, a bit like you, Rach, like I can bring condition but it's staying full that i really struggle with and you know if i can manage to knock that out the ballpark but then bring some sort of individual aspect of my personality to the stage then i think you know it it will be really interesting to see what package you know us three and myself can bring to the stage it is just like i said finding that little niche that you can present to the judges that's going to make them have their eyes on you whether that be posing routine or whatever yeah and and i mean not even just the judges like you can take this as far as you want to take it, right? Do you want, like, how do you want to, how do you want the world to remember you? You know, what kind of impact do you want to leave on the judges? But what kind of impact do you want to leave on the audience? And even further than that, what kind of impact do you want to leave on all the women of the sport? Or what kind of impact do you want to leave on bodybuilding, period, right? So you can, you can take it as far as you want to take it up here. And your actions are going to be different depending on, and how far you want to take it. And there's there's not that's wrong, more wrong or right than the other. If you just want to win a show and leave your impact as a winner, that's fine. But as long as it's it's really what you want. If you wanna if you wanna have people say your name one day and they'll be like, Yeah, bodybuilding hasn't been the same since she showed up, that's that's gonna require a different level of actions on your part. But as long as you know what your your why is and who you are you'll be fine in finding whatever your niche is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's kind of why we've come together as a group of women is because we want to leave a legacy for other women to come back into physique because it's a beautiful category. It's underrated category, especially over in the UK. Like, there's not really many women's physiques. I mean, we were talking earlier that there's not many active WPD pros over in the UK. And, like, we just think that women's like physique deserve more exposure. It's like you can you can count them on one hand. Yeah, yeah, I know, and it sucks because you guys have a lot of like, a lot of great uh, physiques over, over there. You know, I pay attention to women's physique. It's and I pay attention to it overseas, and um, I have friends over there who are coaches, and I have a women's physique client over there, um, and they just don't get the the love they should. And I mean, it's hard. We're not we're not getting the love we should hear either <laughs> um but i mean that's that's why we started the podcast yeah so like, <clears throat> all those avenues there's a lot of men talking about bodybuilding there's also quite a large amount of bikini athletes talking about bodybuilding but it's from that different perspective it's like a, a bikini athlete in off season looks like a normal person in off season we look huge <laughs> and it, you do. It's like there's another way to describe it. It's like I've just had to put in an order for another lot of uniform because I can't fit my legs in. Like yeah. I'm getting to the point yeah. where they're starting to get really tight. And last yeah. time I did it, the woman came back to me. She was like, "Yeah, you've already had like four pairs of trousers this year." It's like I know, <laughs> but I'm fatter. <laughs> yeah. And like not being able to. Oh, my mum's like, "Oh, could you wear something nice? We're going on the day together. Can you put something nice on other than gym gear?" I'm like. <laughs> Mom, I look like, yeah, no, it doesn't, I can't fit in any dresses that I own anymore. I just can't. I know, my, my friend's getting married and she's like, um, can you, like, we're going to pick out some bridesmaid dresses. Like, what kind of dress? Do you I'm like, anything without a back. Like, anything without <laughs> yeah. a back. Like, like no. Uh, here. Have you got anything in a caftan size? Because yeah. that's yeah. all I can fit in. I'm like, I don't. I don't know. I will figure it out. I have more anxiety about your wedding than I do, than you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm but sorry, I'm like, could you uh, just not get any bigger? Just yeah. no bigger. I know. <laughs> it's fun. It's crazy, though. It is. It is crazy, and it's. It's. Um. I wish. I wish more of us talked to each other and had conversations like that because they're so, they're funny, but they're also really valuable because you know you. You don't realize how, and maybe people do, but I didn't for a while. I didn't realize how, like, there's other people, ex there's other women experiencing the same things that I am. And we all kind of walk around like, hi, how are you? Like, when we see each other, mm -hmm. you know, or we're like the, um, we're used to being the, the, the big, the big dog in wherever we're at. There's just not a lot of us. There's usually not, like, eight women's physique girls all hanging out <laughs> in the gym. You know, like getting our name. Oh, it's it, it's it, yeah. And I mean, I just this year I 
I never live with anyone. And I just moved in in December with Melissa Brodsky, who's a. Um, He's insane. Yeah. 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's, <laughs> um, a, a women's, not women's, a women's figure pro. And um, we, we, we've had so many conversations since living together and becoming really good friends where I'm just like, do you ever feel like this? Blah, blah. And it's something I'm like, you sound fucking crazy. And she's like, Oh my God, I feel the same night. And we have these huge conversations and I'm like, damn, there's a ton of girls out here, you know, whether they're good or bad or just weird, quirky prep things. Um, there's a lot of us going through the same stuff and especially the more serious issues. And, you know, there's, there's moments where I, I've been in my career and I've been like, it'd be really cool to know if like, I wasn't the only one dealing with this or if I just, you know, we just had a dialogue going in the, in the yeah. female community and um, it's hard, it's hard to do that because we're all, we're all spread out and I think everyone, this is an isolated sport, but um, things like this where you guys are talking more and doing female based podcasts is great. Uh, there's a lot of guy podcasts and um, they rarely touch on any women. If so, it's if usually- If they do, it's always the negatives. Oh, right. It's always yeah. like, yeah, all these gruff voiced women and other changes. And, and it's almost, it's acceptable and funny to talk about it. And it's like, well, actually, we're still athletes, the same as you. It's just unfortunate that things change yeah, that you don't I, have to deal with. Yeah. And I don't, I don't really understand it because it's like they'll, they're, they're almost alienating us like on purpose. It's like you'll do these reviews of these big shows and it's like, uh, quickly skip over the other categories and let's talk about um, men's men's open bodybuilding, classic physique, men's physique, bikini and, and wellness. And then it's yeah, exactly like that figure yeah. Women's body figure. I get talked about women's bodybuilding. It's okay because the women still wear high heels. So that, that makes it acceptable and pleasing to us. Yeah, Sorry. Exactly. I'm getting on my soapbox and Sarah's just like <laughs> giggling. <laughs> I did a review of the whole show and like people don't even know we were there. And then, in turn, you have the promoter saying like, oh, well, I'm like, well, why didn't you have women's physique at the Arnold? I wanted to do women's physique at the Arnold. You sent us, you sent us applications and then you took them back and you didn't. And so we're all confused. Why, why didn't we get to do the Arnold? You say, is it, well, is it about, is it about money? Are you saying women's physique doesn't make enough money? Well, how are we going to make enough money for your category if you don't promote us and you don't put us in your shows? How are we going to make them? You know, Sarah, Sarah, um, Sarah Villegas, Miss Olympia, who is one of my friends, who, who one of the reasons I'm in Texas at her gym training, she offered um, a ridiculous amount of money of her own money. I think it was like 20 grand to put women's physique in the Arnold. And um, they said no. So if it is about the money, we're not making you enough money. You just had an athlete offer you. Yeah, that, we that had prize money and and you're still not doing it so what is it you just not like us yeah. and I we had a meeting um a pro meeting robin chang came over um it was back in february and we've got a promoter two bros and basically yeah. him and robin chang said that they were like unfortunately wpd just doesn't have the crowds it doesn't bring in the money so robin chang was like i'll waive the sanction and um we left sarah and i left that meeting really quite disheartened that because it was still like, it's not going to happen this year. And literally this weekend, they're, they're announcing that WPD is going to be at the Arnold. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, I was going to have this year off. And now it's like, oh, you start prep in a week. Okay, <laughs> cool. Well, that's good. They're bringing it's, it. It's freaking amazing. It is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, and it's not, it's not the, I'll say it right now, it's not the IFBB. Um, no. Because the IFBB loves women's physique. And I, Jake Wood loves women's bodybuilding. And... Um, that's one of the reasons that the Mannions put women's physique in Pittsburgh pro this year. They've never had Pittsburgh, uh, women's physique is it, because the, the Arnold didn't do it. And, um, they know Arnold's people never could give any of us a reason why. And, um, it's just a shame because there's some big prestigious shows that, and there's some big prestigious girls and we want to win those next level shows and uh, be a part of that and have our moments. And you also don't want to sound like the, the, the naggy women's physique girls always complaining, but you know, we're doing the same fucking work as the boys and we're, we've made it to the pro levels too. And we're at the Olympia and we, uh, we deserve the same respect and we're probably, we're really 
guys on a lot more, you know, things in the gym and out of the gym than any other category. So I'd like to see more of the, the guys supporting their female um, sisters of the sport. And um, I'd like to see the other categories supporting women's physique the way we the way we support them as well. For sure. I mean, like, as a new pro, like, I think when we had that meeting and it, me and Romana had that meeting with the, uh, with um, T bros and stuff like that, like, I've literally, the reason I do women's physique is because of Dana Lynn Bailey when she won the Olympia and her routine and she was, I really connected with her as a, as a person, as her, as what she stood yeah. for. And when you go into a meeting and you're told essentially that women's physique just isn't good enough, it's not what brings in money. I lost everything. I lost completely my way because like, I've, I've always been different. I've always been someone who likes to stand out and I've always been bullied for it. And then I turned pro, which was part of my dream. Obviously I want to step on the Olympia stage. That's the second part. But when you're told that it's not going to really make, like it's not really going to be something in the UK, I just completely lost everything because I, like I said, pushed aside my entire life, got my pro pro card for fuck me. Yeah. Like this is, this is start something amazing, which it is. But then to be pushed to the side once again, because I'm a different, you know, different competitor, all different with bigger women. And it just completely was like just a, a kick in the face. And I think if as much as if we can give this as much as we can as a whole group of women's physique competitors and women, I think, you know, we can teach other people that it's not, you know, what people hush hush talk about. It's, it's an amazing category. And like you said, we should be getting more a support from our male counterparts, other categories, because, you know, we all want the same thing. We all love bodybuilding, we all love everything, but we just need to understand what each category stands for and support each category as well. So, you know, I think it, it will come in time. It takes time, but I think if, you know, we will stand behind it, we will get the support from other, other categories and our male counterparts. And yeah. Like and I mean, even if we want the help of the guys, you know, usually if you're a woman, you got to do it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> and we will i mean I, I like i just think it's gonna you know women's week is still kind of new and i don't and i think for a couple of years we've been like what what is this category really mean um so i think now we're in a really good spot i think there's a there's a group of new women's physique girls who are stepping up and they haven't quite made it to the olympia all of them yet some of them have um, some of them are on their way because I'm paying attention and I think it's a better, a better group of women who are not better. I won't say better than the ones that are here, but I think it's different from the groups that we've had in the past. I think the women coming up in women's physique are more so, um, they're not just competitors. They're also, they have strong voices. They have strong followings. They have strong belief systems and um they're beautiful they're deadly looking they're more mainstream so hopefully with that and with social media and just the new kind of way of the world we can take uh, women's physique in more of a direction of showing like these are beautiful strong women you know mm -hmm. do awesome stuff it's like i want us to be like the girls of the ufc are treated you know mm -hmm. Everyone thinks they're badass, they're gorgeous, they're deadly, um, they're strong, and they're marketed proper, properly. And um, if we can do that same kind of thing, we can uh, take women's physique in a good direction. I think I, hope I, it, yeah. I really hope it happens quicker for women in bodybuilding than it, than it has happened for women in fighting in other sports. I remember I watched a documentary actually when I competed in Hungary on the plane on the way back and it was by a, a bo female boxer in the 80s and how no promoters would put her on the card because she was a woman but actually she was like badass like literally just was smashing everyone and eventually they did promote her and that sort of thing but that was back in the 80s and I think it's definitely improving but there's still a long way to go with women getting it, same recognition I mean the simple thing is the prize money the massive discrepancies even yeah. in the smaller in the smaller shows there was another federation had the universe in the uk the other weekend and the women winning the bigger categories were still getting paid less oh yeah prize money wise than the men and it's like hang on a minute this is 2022 it's yeah. like yeah there shouldn't be a gender pay gap in any circumstances let alone prize money 
Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, uh, I try not to even look at what the other cat take when I do the show. Cause I just, but whatever. Um, yeah. And obviously we don't do it for the money, but it would be nice. nice. To, it would be nice <laughs> to be offered the same thing. Um, we're taking the same amount of risk and, and this and that. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, the best we can do is start going after, you know, what we want. Once you find your niche, that's my advice to the girls out here who are in women's physique, who want to make a business out of this. You're not going to make a business from, um, winning shows, obviously. So if you want to hang with the boys and you want to be better than the boys and you want to make as, as much money, if not more than them and, and be successful in a male dominated sport, you have to uh, go after that shit. You know, I'm, I think I've done them. I think I'm doing the most guest posings of any female. If, if not the guys, I'm, I'm right up there uh, with them. And that's because I'm going after that. I'm going after that. I'm going after, you know, the posing business. Um, I'm going after the clothing line business. I'm going after all of it. So whatever your niche is, when you find it, go after it full force and, you have to get the risk. That's how you get the respect in, in the world of business. And then they'll have, you have to just shove it down everyone's throats to the point where they, they have to treat you like the guys are better than the guys. Um, and it's going to be based on your work ethic and your achievements. And they're not going to be able to say no to you just because you're a girl. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, niche. That's, a, that's like amazing advice to get like almost like goosebumps with you saying that. Cause there's literally there's not enough women out there that actually, they're like, oh no, I don't want to do that because I don't want to offend anyone. I don't want to seem this. And you're like, fuck that. Just do what do what comes natural to you, right? And uh, so, like, it, it's it's that thing that just got, they just don't want women just don't want to do that. They just seem like there's they seem it's very like it's a male dominated, and they do have yeah. that sort of hesitance, don't they? Yeah, and I mean, it is it is a it is nerve wracking at the beginning where you have to go into a a negotiation or a business meeting or, or anything with a bunch of, you know, guys who've been doing this for years and they're all looking at you like, who's this chick? It's just like when you first start walking in the, in the gym, when you first start getting big and, you know, you're like, okay, everybody's looking at me. Like, you know, but as, as you go in more and you get more confident and you've done it in, enough times, you start to walk in and you just look them dead in the eyes. Like, what's up? Like, and it's the same, yeah. the same shit in business, you know, like, you get nervous the first few times and maybe it's because it's male dominated or maybe it's because you've never made it, you know, big business moves and you just keep doing them and you keep showing up and you keep hustling and, and, and then you get, you get what you want and you got to keep going and you probably have to work harder as a female, as a male. And that's just, that's just the way of the world. Um, it's like Marilyn Monroe said, you know, it's like a, I don't care about if I'm not treated the same as a man in, in a man's world. I just want to be a woman in it or whatever she said. So yeah, so in principle here, it's like, do we really want to be treated the same as the guys? We want the same respect, but, and that's fine. You can ask for the same respect as the guys, but are you willing to go do what you got to do to get it? Okay. So if you want to just cry and be intimidated and not go after your dreams and then be like, why aren't you guys treating me the same as, yeah, that guy, but that guy went and got what he wanted. He went after it. You're not doing that. So you can't, can't play a victim card just because you're a chick in a male-dominated uh, business. And, yeah, guys should treat you with respect and this and that. But at the end of the day, money's money and hustle is a hustle and it, and it doesn't have a gender. Yeah, be loud and proud. It's like you can't shy away from it and then expect the world to hand it to you. No. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's nice if you open that door for me as a guy when I'm walking through, but I wasn't expecting you to, and I could still open it myself. But when yeah. the look on their faces when you open it for them and go, after you? Yeah. <laughs> I did that to a guy at work um, on Friday. He's like six foot five and like huge. And I was like, after you? And he was like, um, <laughs> all right then. <laughs> yeah. Didn't really know what to do with himself. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of guys in our sport who do want to see women's bodybuilding and physique do well and they are they are on our team and it's not like you know like all guys suck or whatever um but we should all be supporting each other and it's just another another challenge of, of women in in the world we live in you know how many other how many other sports and how many other avenues of life have women had to you know go the extra mile and wait a little longer to be on the same level 
Um, but what are we gonna do? We just keep doing what we do, and we we always get there eventually. Yeah. Tired. Yeah. Did we want to ask starting some questions? Because we had a couple of questions from a few people. Yeah. Um, should I start off? Yeah, yeah, you go first. Yeah. So, Romana, I'll ask the one that you got just because you don't get your phone out. Um, so, I mean, that's a technophobe. <laughs> <laughs> what was the the most and hardest? What was the most and hardest sacrifice you made to reach your goals? Oh, holy shit! It's a bit deep, but. <laughs> Like, have you had to make many sacrifices to get to like the Olympia? Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the biggest sacrifice. I mean, I don't. I've had some like really dark things happen to me, and um, I don't know which one would be the biggest. I, I've had to give up. I probably say as a general whole, I've had to give up um, parts of myself. And sometimes when you have to go to the place you have to go to for um, to get to the Olympia or to get to a prep or to get through things, you have to uh, give up parts of yourself. And those parts could be good parts. Like if you're overly codependent, like I used to be, I gave that part of myself up, which was probably a good thing right in long term but you give up um <clears throat> you do give up good parts of yourself well I did at least to a certain extent for your dreams you sacrifice you know little bits of your humanity when you have to go cut off your emotions and go to like really dark places to get to the Olympia and um you lose people along the way I've lost some people that I definitely was a blessing to lose I lost some people that um, I regret losing and I wish I didn't lose them and I lost them because I had moments where they got in the way of my dreams and even if they were good influences in my life I didn't care because I cared about winning the Olympia and getting to the Olympia more and that's what I got um, so I paid the paid the price and I would do it again but um, yeah people don't see all these little moments that you go through and these people in um, Things like that. So for me, regret is uh, probably my biggest fear I have right now in the world. When I think about what my fears are a lot before I go into prep so I can try to get rid of them. Before I, before I go into a prep where they might sabotage me. And regret is probably my biggest fear of, um, you know, there's this quote that it says, whether you do or, whether you do or don't, you'll regret it. So it's always this game I play with myself of, you know, should I take it here? Should I do this? Or should I, should I not do this? And what's the right move? And um, the sacrifice is you're going to have regret either way. And it's part, it's part of, part of this. So yeah, I'd probably say just parts of myself that I've had to give up people I've lost. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. It just means I did what I did to get where I'm at and I'm here now, you know? I think um, for me, if, if somebody isn't willing to be there for me after a prep, then were they really the right person to have in my life? Yeah. Anyway, I know that's a bit cutthroat, but. No. Uh, and I mean, it's like, so you don't have to treat, the, you, like, it's like the borderline, like, obviously we're mean. Yeah. A little, like, you can't treat people like shit and expect, like, total shit. No. <laughs> them to be there. Yeah. Like you know, punching them in the face and stuff. That's a little, like, far, right? But it's like you said, if you if you, if you don't have people supporting your dreams, if, I mean, I got a big heart, but, like, if somebody, if somebody isn't on board with my dreams, if they're in the way or if they're, I see a shred of, like, you're not helping me go where I need to go, like, I feel bad saying it, but like you could be in my family, like you could be in my immediate family, and I would, I would cut you off, like, yes. and yeah. you know, some people say that's wrong or whatever, but that's what I have to do to get to where I'm going. You can't have, you know, whether it's a boyfriend or whether it's a, a parent or things like that. I don't think blood doesn't make you, you know, related um, or family. Loyalty makes you family, so. If you're not on board, 
that's what you got to do. Like, if you want to go to the top, top, you got to mm. separate your, your logic from emotion and, and cut out negative influences, like, pretty hard. So I feel you when you say that. I don't think it's – I think you can be have a big, really big heart, and you probably do, but you care about your dream a lot more than the bullshit. I've let people distract me in the past, and I'm not willing to anymore. Yeah, no. No, um, I mean, I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to go because I've got to go and train and then go to work sorry. tonight. So <laughs> I'm going to have to leave you with these two. It's lovely to meet you, and I'm really, really gutted that I can't stay for longer. But I've got to go train. <laughs> yeah, go get it, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'll Thanks, catch Ray. you guys after. Okay, you later, Ray. Bye. 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 So a question I've got for you. Rachel, so I saw on your Instagram you uploaded that video of when posing clients send you songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I've got to ask, are they like, do you get songs like that sent you quite often when people, do they just send you random songs? I mean, and do you, are you cutthroat with that? Are you like, you're not getting on stage on that, with that song? You know, I, I just did that as a joke, but it, it had some truth to it. it um, I get some songs... Obviously, I'm definitely not a posing coach who's going to be like, you here. You have to do the style of music that I like and I prefer that I would pose to because I wouldn't be a very good posing coach that's not very dynamic at all, right? So, like, your song is, that's your song. That should be something you really attach to, not me. I'm just here. That's your story, right? I always tell my clients, like, this is your story. I'm just the storyteller. I'm just good at writing and I'm good at expressing it but it's your story ultimately so your your song has to be yours um but then but there's a fine line you know sometimes i get and it doesn't happen a lot like usually it's something i can work with even if it's something like but i wouldn't tell someone not to get on stage with that song just because it's something i don't like now if it's something that's going to be like so distracting that we're not even going to be looking at your physique or it's like a tempo that I know for their posing level is way too fast where you couldn't even, you know, double count, slow it down and make it a slower routine. Something like that. Yeah. Like, um, like super, super, super heavy dubstep that has no sort of like melody or, or anything like that. That might be an issue or like screamo heavy metal it's just like distract. It's a, some of them are too distracting for a pose yeah. to showcase your physique. The judges are going to be like this instead of looking at. You. So for moments like that, I'd say like, and I usually do it. I usually can get around it by just saying like, can you send? And I usually don't ask for just one song. I, I say like, if you do not have just one song, like please send me like three or four songs that you really like, and then from there. I can usually find one that works. And if I don't, um, a lot of times I, just from those three or four songs, I, I know their style and I, I'll go find a song that's their style and send it to them. And usually we're like, oh my God, that song's even better. Let's do that one. And it's fine. So sometimes they, Cause we, which is nice. <laughs> we were talking about, Sarah and I were talking about, um, cause I've, I'm competing in like seven weeks and we we're talking about finding a, like a song a routine that like for us it evokes emotion so like you can see you can actually visualize yourself posing to that like it makes your hat like your hair stand up on end and then we were talking about when we've been to some multiple shows and you have people using like top 10 songs and like some you get the same two or three songs in the same show and it's kind of like it's again the importance like you spoke about of, of really fine-tuning taking the time to find a song that matches your personality and, and you know portrays that basically yeah like I get a like I send them when I first get a posing routine client I send a big questionnaire you know with a bunch of everything I need from them because I do a lot of research on my people before I just throw a routine out at them um and one of the questions is why did you pick this song and I put that there on purpose because if somebody writes me back and says I just really like this song um I'm not going to do it. I tell them, pick another song. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get these other people, you know, they're like, this is the song. And they'll send me paragraphs about why they picked this song. You know, my brother passed away and this was this thing. I served in Iraq and this was this thing. I, I went through this and this is this thing. And they tell you these like really, really 
painful and beautiful. And sometimes it's not painful. Sometimes it's a beautiful story, um, a happy story. But they have uh, like a significant emotional meaning. And some people are like, well, I just don't have anything like that. And then everybody has, you know, something. Whether it doesn't have to be like, I was a soldier in the war and like, or like my mom died or like something obviously traumatic. We all go through like really traumatic shit. So if you can't find a song that makes you reflect on your strongest, happiest or saddest emotion, that's not the song. There is a song and it's going to show on stage, you know, it's going to show on stage. So you have to pick a song that you, uh, I don't, I don't pick a song unless it makes me cry. Like that's a go for me. It's got to make me cry. Um, yeah, but everybody's different just, but it shows. I'll say that if you don't, if you pick a, just a little, something that sounds good, it's going to show on. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I got another question, um, from someone. So lowest you've been food wise and highest your cardio has gone during prep lowest ever mm. yeah ever. <laughs> ever, ever i've been on no carbs um no carbs, and i mean like none not like a low carb yeah. like i think like the there was four none. in my day and they were from like the fat like residual carbs from the other fats and proteins i was eating <laughs> yeah i mean i've yeah i've died I've done no carbs and maybe my first coach when I did bikini, he put me on like four, four ounces of tilapia and 150 grams of asparagus for the last, uh, four weeks of my prep. That sounds Ooh. nasty. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> did I, like I didn't exist anymore. I, was just, I couldn't. Have you eaten, have you eaten was, tilapia since? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I that many that coach is going to see there, obviously. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, on the most I think my cardio has ever got to is um, 90 minutes. That's not too bad. 70, 80, 90. Yeah, 90 minutes. But um, this last prep was the most food I've ever had. You know, I got more muscle now. I can eat more. My metabolism is pretty, pretty good. Um, so I think my lowest days – on this prep maybe was like 150 grams of carbs. That's pretty that's good. Not, yeah, that's pretty decent prep, and, prep. Yeah, and then when I was peaking for St. Louis, I was at like 1,000 carbs, 900 carbs during peak. Yeah. Mm. That's good. And, uh, yeah, so uh, Shelby got my metabolism in a really good spot. Yeah. So, yeah, he's known for that though, isn't he? Getting people's metabolisms in good spots and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that doesn't work on everyone, but who, who, he works. We all have to work our asses off. I'll say that. You know, I've done some hit cardio where I've like thrown up on myself on the Stairmaster and just kept going. Like, I think that's a lot of people think that when you come in with really good condition that you're just like born that way and you don't really have to like mm -hmm. thing. And it's, it's like, yeah, we were. I'm still, I'm still dying. I'm not like that much of a freak. Like I, <laughs> I, can, I can eat a lot, but I, I still have to like, I die. Yeah. 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 So do you have any more dips? I've, I've not got any more. Did you have any rates from your? Yeah, I did. I, I forgot to screenshot them though, but I don't know if it'll let me. I don't know. That's if all right. That's okay. Um, so I've got a couple. So what are your hobbies away from bodybuilding? <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is when we realize you have no hobbies outside of bodybuilding. <laughs> like, let me make something. Up. No. <laughs> no, I um hobbies away from bodybuilding. I love to dance. Um, just telling my roommate I want to go now that I'm kind of in my off season. I'd like to go find some dance studios in in Texas. There's some of the best dancers in the world are in in uh, this area. So I'd like to go to a studio and just dance with some normal people. Um, now that I have some food in me, I like, I like uh, shooting. I used to do shooting competitions before I was bodybuilding. So I like to shoot gun. Um, and I'm from Florida. So I love water stuff, water sports, like sailing. Um, I'm a pretty 
sailor and I'm a pretty good windsurfer. Anything with the ocean. And yeah, I like weightlifting. <laughs> I don't I don't get to do a lot of the stuff that I like to do as much as I should be doing it. Like get out to the beach a lot, obviously, and and this and that, but um yeah, I like reading. I like writing. I like writing a lot and uh yeah, that's dancing, performing, anything with theater I, I love. That was pretty much the majority of my childhood was like performing. You know, there's always like Broadway music playing in my house. We had like a baby grand piano that we were always somebody was always like playing and singing with. Um so I come from like a very theatrical household. So yeah. Anytime yeah. I be in that environment I feel like very much at home. Mm. I've got a question off the back of that and it's really random. Yeah. So I saw <laughs> I saw a video, I think it was on Instagram, of a Florida I wouldn't know the correct terminology, but a Florida man dancing with an alligator. Have you done that before? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Florida guys look like alligators. No. <laughs> uh, there's Florida's pretty wild. Like uh anytime I hear a, a crazy article like that, I'm like, yeah, it's probably in Florida. We're <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of stuff does actually happen because we, we don't have we don't have alligators or anything like that over here. Oh, we, We're very our wildlife's very basic. So no, we have alligators and people that like have pet pet alligators and like do weird. I remember I couldn't get to prom. Like I was on the way to my prom in high school and like I was late to prom because there was an alligator in the road and there was this guy trying to like grab his tail and like. <laughs> That's just, hilarious. we're just on a different um different level than the rest of the country we're kind of like our own, yeah. our own area <laughs> that's amazing oh, i'd great. love to have that story yeah an alligator stopped me from get, getting to work on time literally <laughs> that work as an excuse probably in florida <laughs> yeah. yeah instead of like the dog ate my homework it was yeah. just an alligator was in the road yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so obviously like we should have really asked this at the beginning but what did you do before uh, bodybuilding and why did you choose physique, women's physique? Okay, yeah, so before bodybuilding. Brrr. So I was a gymnast when I was younger. I was a junior Olympic gymnast. I was really good. And then I had to get back surgery when I was 14. So that obviously ruined my gymnastics career. I was really depressed after that. Because my whole, I was training like three and a half hours a day, six days a week from the time I could walk till I was almost 15 and I had to get this life-changing back surgery. Um, so after that, I was like, what the fuck do I do? Um, and I started dancing because I thought that was the next closest thing in performing and theater because it's, it's not too far off from gymnastics. Um, a lot of dancers have gymnastics backgrounds, so that was the next best thing for me. And I, I danced for a while. I got really good at it, um, and I got really. I started doing backup dancing for different artists um, with a group, and then I went to college, and I was really bad <laughs> um, in college. I got into a, a good bit of trouble, and I got in a good bit of trouble just as a child in general, during my adolescent years, I was never, never, uh, 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 whatever the word is, I wasn't a good kid. So um, when I got back to college, I kind of was like really lost. I started boxing. Um, I hadn't danced since I got to college. I kind of put it away and tried to be like an adult Cause I, you know, everyone's like, oh, you have to get a corporate job and this and that and put all their childhood shit away. And so I tried to do that and I ended up being very depressed and I was too scared to go back to performing. I didn't know where to start, anything like that. So I was fighting a lot cause I was angry and I also it was better for me to be fighting in a gym than like out on the street. So I did that and then I um, hurt my foot boxing. So I took a little break and I was in a, a pretty bad relationship at the time and I got out of that and once I got out of that that was probably like my my rock bottom where I was emotionally and physically 
everything. I was, I was like, yeah, this is, you've had some lows, but this was like, this was my lowest. And uh, I don't know, something kind of just snapped in me and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go do some, I want to be the strongest person I've ever met and just take care of myself and like, not be this like victim girl that I was being. Um, so I, I started going to the gym. I didn't plan on being a bodybuilder. Um, people started asking me when my first show was, I had no idea what they're talking about. And I started going to a bodybuilding gym and I started training with like just big guys. I was like a hundred pounds. I would just be like, walk up to the biggest guys I saw in the gym and I'd be like, can I work out with you? I didn't know what any of sizes were. So they were all really nice to me. And they all trained like fucking Dorian Yates. So I'm like this little bikini girl, like fucking trying to work out, <laughs> which was good. And then eventually I did a, a bikini show um, and I won and I really liked it. But I was like peeled at this bikini show. Like I was like pe- peeled, peeled. I had like separated quads and stuff. And they were like, um, you, they told me they I needed to be, like a higher body fat and like like less legs. And once they said less legs, I was like, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> so <laughs> I uh, I didn't really know the other categories that well. I just kind of like knew I liked growing and getting bigger. And my first coach was like, he was like, I don't think you're going to like make it in figure. He's like, I think you're going to go past figure really fast. He's like, let's just go for a women's physique. And I was like, like you, I saw Dana and Bailey a lot and I loved her attitude. And like, I love that she was like girly and pretty, but she was still like yeah. hardcore and she could like, she was like down in the basement and guys screaming in her face, like doing military presses and shit. And I was like, that's cool. I want to do that. She doesn't want to see. I was like, bet. And um, yeah, so I just started eating a shit ton and training really heavy and I never did figure. And once I found the posing and I did my first physique show and my first routine, I was like, yeah, this is definitely where I'm supposed to be. I obviously didn't really feel at home in bikini ever. It was a good starting point. That's all I could do at the time. I was like very small. Um, and then, yeah, like never had any interest in figure. Yeah. I just, I just knew I was supposed to be in women's physique is yeah. everything I wanted to be. Yeah. I think once you find where you belong, you belong, you know, you don't really want to stray from the path. Yeah, and it's like, I, I, yeah, the judges never told me, like, you should do figure or you should go to bodybuilding or you should go back to bikini. You know, they never said anything like that. Um, they were like, this is your, your, your category. And I kind of feel bad for people who don't really know where they're supposed to be or they do know where they're supposed to be in the judge or they know where they want to be and the judges tell them to be somewhere else. That's probably, like, really hard. Yeah, but I've never had that. I just I've always known I'm supposed to be in women's speak. This is where I do well. Everyone seems to want me here, and I want me here. Yeah, yeah. That happened to me last year. So I I competed in figure for quite a few years, and I got I literally two weeks I got moved up. They were like, you have to go up to women's physique, and I've always done that type of posing, and I it just felt like I was saying to these guys, it just felt so natural to be moved up into that because I thought. I was meant to be in figure. Yeah. And then I moved into women's physique and I was like, this, like, I just felt so at home with it. I felt more natural in it. I didn't really get on with posing in heels. I didn't like the eye walk. Yeah. I was like, I want to showcase my physique. I want to do like proper flexes. I, I love like back double bicep. I love all of it. I was yeah. like, I just, it just felt so much better. And I was like, this is, this is where I'm meant to be. So I was kind of grateful for my coach at the time that said, you're going to get pushed into it. And the judges, their feedback on the day, they were literally like, why are you doing figure? I was like, I thought that's what I was meant to do. And they're like, no, you're in women's physique. And I was like, yes. Yeah. That's yeah. The best. It was nice. That's the best feeling. Yeah. yeah. I was doing like, I have so many pictures of me doing back double biceps in bikini. Like, <laughs> I double <laughs> bicep on stage in my first bikini show. And they were like, uh, can you, number 84, can you put your hands down? I was <laughs> because you're like no they were like oh my God, you can do whatever you want i was like cool <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah I was like, right. so but yeah i totally understand the, the posing if you have any sort of like love for movement i think everybody falls in love with the the old school bodybuilding posing and, and the women's physique posing which is 
pretty much the same with your hands open. <laughs> yeah. I always get people ask me that. They're like, if I post up pictures, they're like, why have you done it with your hands open? I said, because you, you have to. In women's physique, you have to, don't you? I mean, bodybuilding's yeah. close to this. But I mean, like I've watched your routines and I did it in my routine last year. I did do a closed fist on some of them and then gradually opened it after just quickly. Because oh, I yeah. think it just looks nice, doesn't it? In your, a bit in your finals routine, I go all bodybuilding. I don't I don't think I open my hands really at all. If I do open my hands, it's because I'm doing like a fist with a... Yeah. But the night show, it's like they don't care. You know what I mean? Um, what you... So you think it would be cool if I chucked in some some like closed fist ones then at the end? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the end of sure. Yeah. morning time i'm gonna tell them i'm gonna tell them rachel daniels told me that i'm allowed to do it, so. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i live in america <laughs> yeah. sweet well that's kind of all the questions i've got um so yeah me, me too yeah. um but yeah i mean have, have you got anything else that you want to you, did you say you have any questions rachel you, you, you've lost them well I'd have, they're gone i'd have to pull up my instagram if it lets me while i'm on with you guys that's all right i'll um share your instagram whilst you're here as well just so people obviously Everyone knows who you are, but oh, thank you. just for those that, that are new to it. Thank you. Instagram, that's okay. So this is Rachel's Instagram, real Lois Lane. Um, this is the one I'm talking about. <laughs> this was the one, right? <laughs> the routines. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this this is this one. This is recent, isn't it? Yeah, it was yesterday. That's absolutely insane. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm Shelby's sure. comment at the top. <laughs> Thick right now. <laughs> yeah. Did didn't he call you um Big Rammy's mum? Yeah, he always calls me Big Rammy. Yeah. <laughs> He's stupid. I mean, we're not far off. And it like that's Melissa, right? Because wasn't she at one point? Wasn't she contemplating going into women's physique? Yeah, yeah, she was. And I think she's gonna stick with figure for now. Yeah. Because she would do figure at the Olympia anyways, so we were like, let's get your qualification in figure. If you want to do a physique show one day, we'll do that, but yeah. Gotta focus on the the end game. Yeah. And this is you, you said at fifty percent, right? So a hundred percent is gonna look literally inside out. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. where we were at prepping for Pittsburgh. Yeah, that is like insane. Away from that. Three weeks from that. That is absolutely insane. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I just I feel like uh, I always start clapping at the audience when they start clapping at me. <laughs> I don't know why. Because <laughs> I was looking at that picture, I was like, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> but, it's probably just like, it's that thing, isn't it? When someone does something, sometimes you'll subconsciously start doing the same thing. It's like we were talking a minute ago about accents if different parts of the UK. If you're around people for a certain amount of time, yeah, you start picking up their accent and then you start sounding like <laughs> it as well without even knowing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Like, so yeah. I just want to thank. But sometimes I just want to like clap at the audience because it's like it sucks when it's great to have a good audience. Like some audience, yeah, can really light you on fire, and you can like feel the audience giving something back to you. It's like you're giving shit to each other. So it's like, yeah, uh, and I'm clapping for myself because I'm like, thanks for clapping me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I did this. This is go me also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. No, thank you so much for your time, Rachel. It's been amazing. It's been so insightful. Um, I appreciate you're a busy lady, but no, I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much. Thanks for having this where you guys talk with women about women. Um, Don't be strangers. If you ever need anything, just give me a text. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. And maybe in the future, we'll we'll get you back on again at some point if if you'd be up for it. Yeah, Yeah, maybe like post-Olympia. Yeah, that was sick. Yes, we we want to do. We we were thinking about doing like a rundown of the Olympia, so trying to watch it live and do it at the same time to so do like commentary alongside it that's and get a full coverage of women's physique. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. that's the plans. But um, thank you again. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Obviously, we'll we'll be watching and keeping in touch. But best of luck with everything. Thanks. Best of luck to you girls too. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, we'll get there soon. We'll get there. Maybe be on stage one day. <laughs> let me see. Yeah, let me know how your shows go. For sure. For sure. We will. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Bye. girls. Take care, Rach. Bye. Yeah. Maybe I'm a different breed. Maybe I'm not listening.